Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my hands-on first looks review of the Canon EOS R10, a mid-range, cropped frame mirrorless camera with a 24 megapixel APS-C sensor and 4K 60p video. Announced in May 2022, a body price of $979 or 899 pounds, Canon describes it as an all-rounder pitched roughly between the 850D and 90D DSLRs. It's also priced quite close to the full-frame EOS RP, but the smaller, more affordable sensor allows a more sophisticated feature set. Plus, for some people, the smaller APS-C sensor is actually preferable to full-frame, not only cheaper to manufacture, but effectively magnifying the view from all lenses by 1.6 times, while still maintaining the full image resolution. The R10 packs all of its 24 megapixels into that smaller APS-C area versus the EOS RP, which may start slightly higher with 26 megapixels, but falls to around 10 when cropped to the same degree. The smaller sensors also allow more compact bodies and lenses to be developed. Canon loaned me a pre-production R10 for this initial review, where I'll show you around the body, controls and features. I'll also briefly talk about the photo and video quality, but I'm leaving my full performance report for a final production model, which I'll link to here when it's ready. Make sure you subscribe so you know when it's good to go. The EOS R10 on the left was launched alongside the higher-end EOS R7 on the right, and I also have a review of that model if you're interested. The R7 body costs $14.99 or £13.49. They jointly launched the RFS system, a new series of mirrorless cameras and lenses designed for smaller crop frame APS-C sensors. It's not compatible with Canon's earlier EFM system, but by employing the same mount as full frame RF bodies, you can fit any RF lens without an adapter, with their field of view reducing by 1.6 times. Or indeed vice versa, with RFS lenses also working on full frame EOS R bodies, albeit in a 1.6 times crop mode. This is a key benefit over Canon's EFS lenses, which were designed for APS-C bodies, but couldn't mount on full-frame DSLRs. Speaking of DSLR lenses, you can of course adapt any EF or EFS lens, and anything you mount on the R10 will have its field of view reduced by 1.6 times. This fully backward and forwards compatibility between cropped and full-frame gear without any adapters is something EFM could never offer. And while Canon, again, prefers not to burn bridges, I'd say RFS almost certainly marks the end of ESM development, not that there's been a great deal of that in recent times. That said, with the entry-level R10 body alone costing $979 or £899, Older EOS M bodies, like the M50 and M200, will remain on sale as a more affordable option for those wanting to get into mirrorless on a tighter budget. Canon's launched the RFS system with two new zoom lenses, the RFS 18-45mm f4.5-6.3, a compact collapsing model that becomes the standard kit zoom for the R10, and the RFS 18-150 f3.5 to 6.3, a super zoom that's optionally bundled with either the R10 and R7. I've made short videos about both of these lenses if you'd like to find out more. There's no RFS roadmap as yet. In your hands, the R10 feels light but sturdy, although as a more affordable model, don't expect the weather sealing of the R7. Weighing 424 grams with battery and only 560 grams when also fitted with the RFS 18 to 45 kit zoom, it never feels a burden to carry around. And at 123 by 88 by 83 mil is sufficiently compact to squeeze into smaller bags without compromising the grip, which was just about tall enough to accommodate all my fingers. The controls include a clicky shutter release and separate finger and thumb dials, the latter also home to a collar switch for the power. And while the main mode dial isn't lockable, it is sufficiently stiff not to be turned by mistake. Like other more affordable models from Canon, you can start recording movies by simply pushing the record button, but by first turning the mode dial to the dedicated movie position, you'll unlock more options. Meanwhile, round the back, I was pleased to find an AF joystick, as well as an AF on button, two features you don't always see at this price point. The fastest mechanical shutter is 4,000th of a second, extendable to 16,000th if you use the silent electronic shutter, albeit not during bursts, where the maximum is 4,000th with either shutter type. Oh, and bonus points to Canon for a new AF-MF switch by the lens mount, which is particularly handy when using the more affordable RF lenses that lack a switch of their own and previously forced you to delve into the menus. I fed that back to them, so thanks for listening. Like most new Canon bodies, the R10 is equipped with a fully articulated touchscreen, which can flip and twist at almost any angle, including forward to face you or back on itself for protection. It uses a 2.95 inch panel with 1.04 million dots. 
Meanwhile, the viewfinder employs a 2.36 million dot OLED with 0.95 times magnification and the choice of 60 or 120 Hz refresh rates. It's an entry level resolution for an EVF, but par for the course at this price point. Interestingly, while the Prisier R7 does have a larger viewfinder magnification, it shares that same panel resolution, which is more of a disappointment at that price point. All the ports are behind two flaps on the left side of the body. There's micro HDMI and USB-C behind one, the latter supporting charging and camera with a power delivery source, and I checked that it works with my Samsung phone and Apple MacBook chargers. Behind the other is a remote jack port and a 3.5mm microphone input, but there's no headphone jack. For that, you'll need the R7. Meanwhile, the hot shoe, inherited from the EOS R3 and R5C, supports additional accessories including microphones with direct audio connections. The R10 also includes a pop-up flash, a handy feature missing from the pricier R7. The single SD card slot, exploiting UHS-2 speeds, and the battery are housed within the same compartment beneath the body. The R10 is powered by the LPE17 battery, quoted as delivering up to 430 shots with a screen or 260 with a viewfinder under super conditions, and again you can charge it in camera over USB power delivery. Which brings me to the sensor, APS-C sized and sporting 24.2 megapixels. This is based on the same sensor in a wealth of Canon bodies including the M50 Mark II with much the same resolving power as a result, but Canon claims to have improved the macro lenses and circuitry which, coupled with the newer Digic X processor, may provide faster speed and lower noise. I hope so and I'll test that in part 2 of my review. Unlike the higher end R7, there's no sensor based IBIS stabilization on the R10, but at least both of the RFS zooms feature optical stabilization, and there's also optional digital compensation for movies in the body. Like many more affordable mirrorless cameras, including the RP, the R10 sensor is also exposed when powered down. This is to protect the shutter blades, which are actually more fragile than the sensor. Generally, the shutter only closes when powered down on higher end models like the R7. In terms of photo quality, you can record 24 megapixel images with 6000 by 4000 pixels in either JPEG, HIF or 14-bit RAW formats. Compressed RAW and lower resolution JPEG or HIF options are also available. Impressively, the R10 shares the same mechanical shooting speed as the higher end R7, firing off up to 460 JPEGs or 29 RAWs at 15 frames per second using the mechanical shutter. And here's how that sounds. Alternatively, you can switch to a fully electronic shutter and enjoy up to 70 JPEG or 21 RAWs at 23 frames per second at the full 24 megapixel resolution and with the benefit of potentially silent shooting. You can however have a sound effect playing if you like and here's how that sounds. The R10 also has an electronic RAW burst option which fires at 30 frames per second with the option to enable a half second pre-shot buffer so you don't miss the moment say that a bird takes flight. Unlike the higher end R7 though, the RAW files in this burst mode are cropped to 75%. The R10's autofocus sports coverage across the entire frame and supports human, animal or vehicle detection. The R10 also includes multiple exposures and focus bracketing as well as interval and bulb timers. There's even a built-in auto-stitching panorama mode the first time on an EOS camera. Now, I'm waiting for a final production model before evaluating the quality and performance, but for now, here's a shot I took with a pre-production R10 and RFS 18-150 zoom, which shares the kind of detail that, of course, we've seen from other 24 megapixel Canons. Moving on to video, the R10 will film uncropped 1080 at 24-60p, or uncropped 4K at 24-30p. There's also 4K at 50 or 60p, albeit incurring a further crop, although this will at least give you even extra reach for those distant wildlife subjects. Canon says that the uncropped 4K mode that operates up to 30p oversamples from 6K's worth of data. So just to get you started, here's a 1080-25p clip I filmed with the RFS 18-150 using a pre-production R10. So again, while I'm leaving my analysis to a final model, I thought I'd quickly show you some of the other modes. So here's the R10 in 4K at 25p using IPB compression at 120 megabits per second, followed by the cropped 4K at 50p which uses 230 megabits per second. I'll make detailed comparisons when I have a final production model. There's also high frame rate video in 1080 at 100 or 120p that's automatically slowed four times and encoded at 25 or 30p respectively. There's no sound in this mode though. 
in the standard profiles, the R10 encodes video in 4208-bit using H.264, but it also supports HDRPQ, which encodes in 4210-bit using H.265, HEVC, and at slightly higher bit rates. There isn't, however, a log option on the R10, and that forces graders to consider spending more on the EOS R7. In a very welcome update though, the R10 dispenses with the old 30 minute recording limit and will now keep recording up to a maximum of 2 hours per clip, assuming you don't run out of power, memory or become overheated. You can see my pre-production R10 sailing past 30 minutes here when filming in the 4K 25p mode. The smaller battery means you're unlikely to get beyond an hour of 4K though, and you can see here the battery icon flashing as I approach 60 minutes. You'll also see the new temperature meter, helpfully indicating how close you are to overheating with a 10 segment scale, here currently at 2 bars, and the camera only feeling a little warm. If memory and cooling aren't an issue, you can theoretically record up to 2 hours on the R10 under USB power, but under a full battery charge alone I managed to record a single 4K clip lasting 58 minutes and 49 seconds. When I tested the R7, the battery lasted for just over double that time. As I mentioned earlier, the EOS R10 may lack IBIS, but it does have digital movie stabilization. So to try it out, here's a clip I filmed with an adapted EF 50mm f1.8 STM lens, which doesn't have any optical stabilization of its own. So this first clip is completely unstabilized and rather shaky. And now with digital movie IS enabled on the R10, which understandably incurs a crop, but makes the view much steadier. Which brings me to the end of part one of my R10 review. Once I've fully tested a final production model, I'll link to part 2 here, plus of course I have my hands-on reviews of the R7 and the two RFS zooms for you in the meantime to keep you going. My first impressions of the R10 are certainly promising, with it offering a decent array of features and controls for the money. Sure, it's similarly priced to the SRP, but you may prefer to trade that full-frame sensor for a more feature-packed body, while the smaller sensor will be beneficial if you're shooting small and distant subjects. And while RFS effectively kills EFM, Canon frankly had to pull off the band-aid and develop a new line that's forwards and backwards compatible with full frame, just like Sony and Nikon. It's frustrating for EOS M owners, but the right long-term move for Canon. I'd love to hear what you think of the EOS R10 and RFS lenses, especially if you're an EOS M owner. Let me know in the comments and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on part 2 or any of my other reviews. As always, there's links in the description for the latest pricing, as well as for a cheeky coffee donation if you're feeling extra generous. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.